You all like watching TV? Well, yes, I know you do, and so do I. You might be wondering why am I asking you this today? Well, yes, I am concerned. I have a sound reason for this, and you might have guessed that I'm hinting towards today's topic. What are the dry eyes? Why do they occur? And so many questions. Let's have a chit chat about the effect of anticholinergic drugs on our eyes and the associated structures. Here the convo commences. Welcome all to this pharmacology difficult podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD, pharmacology, and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods, and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better, and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your mind is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Vision is power. This world seems pretty through the eye lens. And today we have a talk about the drugs, especially the anticholinergic agents. Mind it, I'm not only talking about atropine, but I'm also talking about the semi-synthetic derivatives, the atropine substitutes or the congenital drugs like cyclopentolate, tropicamide, homatropine, etc. When we talk about our eyes, it's worth knowing that the circular muscles of iris, the ciliary muscles of the tear glands, they all have M3 receptors. If you administer anticholinergic eye drops like that of atropine, then these M3 receptors, they are in fact blocked. Resultant antagonism of the actions of constrictor muscles of the pupil they lead to midriasis. Now you know it's very important to understand the cause of this midriasis. Is it the blocker of the constrictor muscles activity? No, not at all. It's the resultant unopposed dilator action and it is adrenergic in nature. How and why? Now is the time to dive in. Iris is composed of radial muscles and these muscles they possess alpha-1 adrenergic receptors. Their unopposed dilator activity results in the form of midriasis. So tell me, is this midriasis direct or indirect? In other words, is it active or passive? I'm sure you all might have guessed it right. It's the indirect or passive midriasis. Another basis is the regular responses of the pupil, they are blocked. And what do I mean by this statement? What do I mean by regular responses? You see, if the light is thrown on the eyes, then the pupil does not respond at all. But what happens in the normal cases? The pupil generally constricts, but in this particular case of indirect or passive midriasis, the pupil does not constrict and this state is referred to as the loss of the light reflex. On the contrary, if the midriasis is direct or active, the light reflex it stays intact. There is no loss of accommodation and one solid cause of this particular statement is you need to remember the note down point is that both ciliary muscles and the circular muscles of the iris they lack sympathetic innervation i repeat the ciliary muscles and the circular muscles of the iris they lack sympathetic innervation and when they are not having any sympathetic innervation how will the adrenergic drugs affect them they cannot no way not at all hope you got it now there is excess of dilatation of pupil in the case of indirect and passive midriasis and this situation is a condition of photophobia. Due to complete blockage of the M3 receptors, all cholinergic stimulations, they are antagonized. What else happens? There is a prominent tightening of the suspensory ligaments. The lens becomes less convex. Can you imagine? It actually flattens. The vision is fixed for the distant vision. 
and now a new term is coming up this state of eyes and vision is aptly called as cycloplegia c y c l o p l e g i a and this cycloplegia is also known as the paralysis of accommodation that was a good great chunk of info right now if you have noticed there is concurrent state of midriasis and cycloplegia and this particular situation is very very harmful why because the intraocular pressure is rising especially it is very evident in the extremes of the age groups and especially in the people having shallow anterior chamber it is also evident in the cases and the patients of narrow angle glaucoma due to midriasis the iris falls back on the canal of schlem and due to this falling back of iris the outflow of the aqueous humor it is blocked and that's why the intraocular pressure rises and the tears they also dry up i mean the empty receptors they are found on the lacrimal glands they are blocked there are no lacrimal secretions in fact the patients they possess a kind of a dry sandy eyes i'm sure you're imagining such dry sandy eyes which are affected by the cholinergic block and to be very frank they are not pretty at all now after knowing all these facts it's a time to quickly summarize the applications and the indications of ophthalmic anticholinergic agents first one the importance of the anticholinergic agents is to help in the ophthalmic examination of the eye especially examination of the retina since they cause ciliary muscle paralysis then the refractory error is accurately measured hence such eye checkups they are greatly facilitated and nowadays semi synthetic atropine substitutes like cyclopentolate tropicamide eukotropin they are better used for these purposes and why they are used instead of atropine because they have a great advantage they have a very short duration of action and they have less adverse effects the patient compliance is much much better with these agents now one thing is always to be kept in mind We are using anti-muscarinic drugs to achieve both midriasis and cycloplegia as far as I've talked. If both the situations are not desired, I repeat, if you don't need midriasis along with cycloplegia, then alpha adrenergic drugs like phenylephrine, they are preferred because they are not associated with cycloplegia. They only cause short lived midriasis especially this is very very useful in elderly people and they produce a good enough midriasis for the examination of the fundus of the eye now the next indication of anti cholinergic drugs as far as the ophthalmic uses they are concerned is to combat the adhesive states in cases of the eye inflammatory conditions like iritis iridocyclitis uveitis there is profound inflammation and there is sticking of the lens especially the anterior surface with the iris then in such situations if you use alternatingly myotics like pilocarpine and then long acting midriatics like homeatropine if they are used alternatively then such adhesions can be prevented so that was the second use of midriatics atropine the congener drugs especially in this case homeatropine is very effective i think eyes are very sensitive delicate structures Today they have taken a good gracious valuable minutes of our discussion right a friendly reminder is to take good care of your eyes the window through which the view of this pretty global landscape 
is visible. Hope you agree with me. With this amicable thought, it's a wrap. Ciao for now. For all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast, do visit www.pharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine. It actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name. It's Pharmacology Difficult. If you're listening for the first time, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes, Apple Podcast. Stay safe, stay happy, stay enlightened. Thank you.